Hi, this is Prash Sanders from the University of Adelaide here in uh, San Francisco for the Heart Rhythm Society uh, meetings. I'm here with uh, Dr. Vijay Raman who's presenting a late-breaking clinical trial uh, titled Clinical Outcomes in Selective versus Non-Selective His Bundle Pacing. Dr. Vijay Raman, would you want to tell me about the study itself? Well, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, so what we were looking at was in patients with His Bundle Pacing, you have two types of His Bundle Capture, both selective and non-selective. And it's not always clear when you have non-selective histone pacing, the right ventricular fusion, does it add to any adverse clinical outcome? So that was our aim. So we looked at our successful histone pacing patients. We had about 640 of them. Of them, we looked at patients who had more than 20% ventricular pacing. And at three month follow up, we categorized them into selective or non-selective histone pacing based on the uh, base QRS morphology and the final program output. And then looked at clinical outcomes in terms of heart failure hospitalization and death. So the combined endpoint was not statistically different between the two groups, even though there was a trend towards higher heart failure hospitalization and mortality in non-selective hispermal pacing. But the big factor is that non-selective hispermal pacing patients often have higher degree of infranodal AV block. And so there you cannot avoid having non-selective hispermal pacing. So there are some differences in the clinical group, but nonetheless, there were no differences in clinical outcome between the two groups. So hispermal pacing, selective or non-selective, equally good. So clinically, it would mean we should pace in that region if, if we can't get the his directly? No, we need to have his capture, irrespective of whether it's gotcha. pure his or associated with RV fusion. Perfect. Thank you.